Over the last few years, more and more modern technologies have been utilized by individuals with access to them in an effort to not only expose the truth regarding the real history of man, but to discover the actual original size of these now lost civilizations' ancient ruins. Many sites have been laid to waste, not only by future settlements and tomb robbers, but by Mother Nature herself, many of these most impressive sites having endured eons of erosion after being mysteriously abandoned, exposed to the elements. Yet there exists a number of these sites, which have been somewhat protected from these forces. Although vegetation can have a catastrophic effect, uprooting the megalithic foundations of these sites, yet the actual footprint of these structures, and indeed the overall size of these once lost settlements, can still be seen through modern penetrative radar, with one of the most incredible found in the past few years. Undoubtedly, the mega metropolis, hidden beneath the dense forests of Guatemala. Although some clearings dotted within this landscape have been spared, somehow avoiding the suffocation of trees, it has been discovered that these sites, long argued as separate sites of habitation, were, in reality, once part of the same gigantic city, one of unimaginable size and complexity that was unquestionably home to not mere thousands, but was in fact a settlement that was home to more than 10 million. Yet although this reality is a compelling, supportive fact regarding our own beliefs, in regards to a far greater, now hidden, and widely ignored history of mankind, there are still features of this ancient site that is still attempted to be ignored, overlooked, and hopefully concealed from the majority of the world's population, ultimately avoiding them questioning the true reality of what they have been taught, and the possible truth regarding our history, which these sites could provide to all those who gaze upon them. Although these particular megalithic blocks somehow stood on their heads, have been explored and exposed for nearly a hundred years with many photographic expeditions having been made to these sites, it has now been proven that these megalithic blocks were not merely signposts made of stones in situ, but were clearly stones cut and once transported to their current location, and were actually strategically placed within one huge mega-settlement. This fact is attempted to be stifled, avoiding individuals questioning how, if indeed they were transported and cut by our more recent ancestors, the Mayans, how they actually accomplished this feat, when they clearly required now lost techniques and technologies, as although they were far more primitive, technologically speaking to the modern man, with us only accomplishing such abilities within the last century, all thanks to modern technology. This is clearly an identifying feature, which exposes the true capabilities of the builders of this enormous city, and the fact that although academics would like to argue that it was merely a Mayan settlement, it possesses, like so many other astonishing sights on Earth, as yet unexplained enigmas, which not only fly in the face of this explanation for their origins, but actually suggest that they were merely re-inhabited by the Mayans, allowing archaeologists to point the finger at such a group due to their archaeological fingerprint having been left at the location, sites which were in fact built by a now lost yet once highly capable ancient civilization, that due to their immense age has now been lost to history like so many of their ancient settlements, lost to the sands of time, with only the foundation of which now survive, thankfully exposed by modern technologies. Who were these ancient people? How or indeed why did they move and cut such enormous, enigmatic ancient megaliths within this enormous, now lost city? It is a place which we find highly compelling. There are many places on our planet so remote or little mentioned that much of the world has never heard of said sites, and the Great Salbic Kurgan is one such example of an incredible ruin that has been largely forgotten, or overlooked by modern academic study. 
Clearly of a Neolithic age, the thing which is most striking regarding the ruin is the sheer size of the megalithic blocks which make up the main structure. Claimed by many as the most majestic and mysterious ancient monument of southern Siberia, the mound is located in what is locally known as the so-called Siberian Valley of the Kings, where several thousand years ago, it is claimed, there existed a kingdom, one made up of a people once known as the Tagars. Thus, the age monument has been pinned on said culprits, with an age of around 2,300 to 2,500 years attributed to the site. The main earthwork is a stone square mound, 70 meters by 70 meters in size, as mentioned, huge slabs of Devonian sandstone. Some estimated as weighing as much as 50 to 70 tons were somehow once inexplicably delivered to the site from a quarry site of over 100 kilometers away found upon the banks of the Yenisei River. It is believed that it was an ancient temple, and at a later date an ancient astronomical observatory, which like most other Neolithic sites incorporates processional cycles in its alignment, showing the movement of the sun and the moon. As mentioned, it still remains a complete mystery as to what devices were once utilized for the importation and installation of these gigantic stones. At the corners and sides of the stone fences are deeply driven large meniers, all 23 stones are of an enormous sight. Measuring up to a height of 6 meters, they're clearly smoking guns flying in the face of upheld academic fallacies. The rare excavations and explorations noted as having been undertaken at the site note that before the construction of the giant earth embankment and its accompanying stone fence, there was a crypt of logs in its place, once in the form of a truncated pyramid. This whole crypt can be found inside the huge earthwork preserved beneath, untouched, yet covered with a thick layer of bark. The crypt had the height of 2.5 meters in depth of 2 meters of water covered the pit. It is claimed that around the burial zone, for a long time a strong anomaly has continually been observed. The study of these phenomena has indeed been engaged by scholars, but the pace of said explorations has been suspiciously slow paced. Who built the great Salbic Kurgan? How were these huge stones transported to the site and once driven into the earth at the site? What is this quote, strong anomaly? More investigation and popularization of the site is desperately needed. It is a place which we find highly compelling. Thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care. In 1977, archaeologists in Poland discovered the astonishing remains of what has now been confirmed was a medieval female giant. It is surprising that the remains survived long enough to be confirmed as an anomaly without mysteriously going missing. But measuring only 7 foot 2 inches, it may have been presumed that she was just abnormally large. Examinations of her remains, still in situ, have concluded that she was thrown into her burial site without much care, as if hunted, killed and buried. She has been named Ostrautomsky, and her remains are located on a lake island, half-hour drive from Poznan. The island includes an ancient palace, church and fortifications. The island has been inhabited since the late Stone Age and the ruins are shrouded in legend. One intriguing ancient story tells of an unknown king, who rests together with his knights at the bottom of the lake. While all other burials in the island's cemetery are made with the head facing west, this giant woman was buried facing in the opposite direction. Maybe they believed her kind to be cursed. Many ancient tribes and cultures still retain stories about a long forgotten existence of a race of humans that were much taller and stronger than ordinary men. These giants are described as both brave and barbaric, and legends often mention their cruelty. Plenty of these tales can be found in South America. The Peyot, a tribe from the Nevada region thousands of years ago, had a legend about a race of red haired giants called the Sea Tika. The ancestors of the Payet described them as savage and inhospitable cannibals. In the northern Payet language, CT literally means two leaders. The legend states that the giants came from a distant land, crossing the ocean on rafts built out of the Tula plant. This legend repeats itself all over the Americas. In the 16th century, Pedro Cesar de Leon recorded an ancient Peruvian tale regarding the origin of the South American giants. According to locals, they also came by sea in rafts of reeds, some of the men were so tall that from the knee down they were as big as an ordinary man. They tell of the giants waging war on the Payet and all neighboring tribes, spreading terror and devastation. Finally the tribes united against their common enemy and decimated them. 
the last remaining red-haired giant sought shelter inside a large cave. The tribes eventually started a fire at the entrance, suffocating the giants. In 1886, a mining engineer named John T. Reed happened to hear the legend from a group of pets while prospecting near Lovelock, Nevada. The Indians told him that the legend was real and that the cave was located nearby. When he found the cave himself, he was unable to begin digging. News soon spread regarding the discovery of Lovelock Cave. But the attention was profit-driven, a guano deposit was discovered inside, and soon after, in 1911, a company started excavating the precious resource shipping more than 250 tons to a fertilizer company in San Francisco. Any artifacts that may have been discovered were probably neglected and lost. However, many may have been stolen away under the guise of fertilizer prospecting, indeed the company may have all along been a Smithsonian ruse, to steal the artifacts from within the cave. After the surface layer of guano had been mined, and the best amongst the smaller relics stolen, strange objects were officially recorded. An official excavation was performed in 1912 by the University of California and 1924. Reports told of thousands of artifacts being recovered, some of them being truly unusual. After a full excavation, removing the entire guano deposit, mummified remains of several red-haired, ancient giants, were found buried in the cave. Measuring between 8 to 10 feet in height, these mummies have since been referred to as the Lovelock Giants. Another intriguing find was a pair of 15-inch long sandals that showed signs of having been worn. Allegedly, other unusually large items were recovered but have since been locked away in museum warehouses and private collections. Including the Giants, only a few remnants of the amazing discovery remains in public display. A piece of evidence that remains on site until this day is a giant hand print, embedded on a boulder inside Lovelock Cave. Made by a giant hand that was covered in soot. Around the same time as the second Lovelock Cave excavation, another dig revealed amazing finds. According to a 1931 article published in the Nevada Review Minor, two giant skeletons had been found buried in a dry lake bed close to Lovelock, Nevada. The oversized remains measured 8.5 and 10 feet in height, and also, what I feel is the most interesting fact of all, were mummified in a manner similar to the one employed by ancient Egyptians. The common trait between these mummified giant remains, and others recorded in the archives of rare preliminary press articles, discovered as far south as Lake Titicaca, is the presence of red hair. While some scientists believe the reddish color is a result of the interaction with the environment in which they were buried, the mummies verify the legends, which describe the sea tika and their clean as living red-haired giants. With so many remains now missing, it is up to all of us, to collaborate the proof of our mysterious history.